Hi, welcome to Elevate, a series of resources that are designed to help you bring excellence in teaching to your church and the homes of your families. In this overview, we're going to be looking at and explaining the key elements of Elevate Kids, our curriculum designed for first through sixth grades. Elevate Kids is designed to teach children the foundational stories of the Bible and to show them how the lessons learned from those stories can apply to their lives each day. As you watch this introductory video, I think that you'll see that here at Elevate Kids, we believe that style and presentation are important, but only if there is something worth presenting, and that something is the Bible. Elevate Kids is designed to be flexible enough to be used in a variety of settings, it can be used in a classroom or Sunday school format. It can be used in a children's worship hour or it can be used any night of the week. Really, any time that you have a group of kids together and you want to teach them something from the Bible, that is an appropriate time to use Elevate Kids. And Joanna, Elevate Kids can be used with one teacher or it can be used with two teachers. It all depends on how you want to implement it. All right, let's take a walk through a typical lesson so you can see all that Elevate Kids has to offer. For this video, we're going to show Elevate Kids being used in a children's worship hour with two teachers. However, if you want to use Elevate Kids with one teacher in a large group setting or with one teacher in a classroom setting, be sure to watch all of this video. The majority of the elements that we'll be explaining over the next several minutes apply to every possible environment that Elevate Kids can be used in. All right, let's go. As the teaching time begins, Elevate Kids provides an opening activity that introduces the kids to the main point for that day. This is usually a high energy game that takes place as the kids begin arriving and is designed to get the kids excited and ready to begin the lesson. Once all of your kids have arrived and the lesson starts, you will enter into the large group time. Here, the Bible story, skit, main point, and Bible verse will be introduced. And in this large group time, you will be using a mixture of live teaching and video teaching. Now, before we go any further, it's important to note that the video teaching elements provided in Elevate Kids are never meant to stand on their own. The sole purpose of each video element is to visually communicate part of the lesson, much like the flannel graph has done over the past 50 years. It's the teacher's job to then take the content of the video and the content of the live teaching and weave it into a cohesive whole. But don't worry, none of that is left to chance. Whether you're using two teachers or one, there is an appropriate script to follow that will help your teachers tie their teaching and the video elements together. Now, one of the first things we do in our teaching time is present the main point. The main point for each lesson is an application statement taken from the Bible story for that day. We believe it's important for the kids to remember the main point because the main point tells them how to take the information learned from the Bible story and apply it to their own life. Because the main point is so important, we present it in seven or eight unique ways throughout the teaching time. This is done so that the different learning styles of each child, whether they be auditory, visual, or hands-on, can be addressed giving each child an equal opportunity to learn. In this particular lesson, which is taken from our eight-week series entitled Alasso Ranch, the kids will learn a main point taken from a Bible story found in Exodus chapters 25 and 40. And it's all about the Israelites building the tabernacle. After the kids see the main point, we assign motions to it and have the kids do those motions every time the main point is said. This helps all learners, but it especially helps kinesthetic learners to remember the main point long after they have gone home. After the main point motions, the leaders spend three to five minutes introducing the topic for the day, which leads them into the presentation of the Bible story. You know, those guys were so awesome. I love to hear them yell and scream and get excited about God. I know, that's right, because God deserves our worship. Mm -hmm. You know, He deserves our best. That's right, worshiping Him means loving Him, respecting Him, praising Him, devoting our lives to Him. Essentially, it's giving our best. That's right, in fact, we're going to learn about some people in the Bible who gave their best to worship God. All right, so everybody put up your fingers, here we go. Three, two, one, go.
I'm standing here today in Alasso Ranch's worship center, where every night during camp, we come and close out the day worshiping God. Now, we can worship God anytime during the day. We can worship Him when we pray, when we read our Bibles, when we give our tithes and offerings, when we obey Him, and like we do each night of camp, we simply can sing praises to Him. And as followers of God, we should be constantly worshiping Him because when we worship God, we show Him how awesome He is and that we love Him. Well, in my Bible story today, we're gonna see that the Israelites understood the importance of worshiping God. And we can see this by looking in the Bible in the book of Exodus in chapters 25 and 40. One day, as the Israelites were on their journey to the promised land, God said to Moses, Have the people of Israel build me a holy sanctuary so I can live among them. <laughs> wow! God wanted to live amongst the people. How cool is that? I'll bet you God would be a great neighbor. Well, a place for God to live among His people couldn't be just any old ordinary place. It would have to be very special. The people would have to give and do their very best to make this place worthy of God, the one that they worshiped. Now, remember, these people were in the wilderness. They couldn't go to a store to buy the items they needed. They would have to give of their own possessions and that's what they did. They brought all of their most precious belongings like gold and silver, bronze, gems, fine cloth, thread, wood, and even valuable oils and spices. They gave their best to God, and when they did, they were worshiping Him. But that's not all. The people didn't give just of what they owned. They also gave their time and skill as well. Those who could sew worked with the cloth. Those who could work with wood built the tent poles and formed the wooden furnishings. Those that could work with metal formed precious objects out of the gold, silver, and bronze. Everyone used their skill to help complete the task. And finally, the place where God would dwell was completed. And it was then that something amazing happened. In Exodus chapter 40, we read that God's glory filled the tabernacle. God was now living among the Israelites. The Israelites had given their very best and they'd worked very hard in doing so. And when they did that, they were worshiping God. They didn't give their best to honor Moses or someone else in the group. They did it for God because He is awesome and because He is the only one worthy of our worship. You know, as I look at this story, I realize we can all learn a lot from the Israelites' example. We should worship God always by giving Him our best too. And we can give God our best by praying, by reading our Bibles, by giving our tithes and offerings, by singing praises to Him, and most importantly, by obeying Him in all things. So this week, let's show God how awesome He is by giving Him our worship all week long. Trust me, there's no one who deserves it more. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and we love you. And we just want to tell you how awesome you are. Thank you for giving us our abilities and our skills and all of our possessions. And I pray that each one of us will be able to use those things to give worship to you. We ask all these things in your son's precious name. Amen. Now let's pause here for a moment to look at a pretty cool feature. When you use Elevate Kids, you have the option of presenting the Bible story in one of two ways. 
The first way is to show the video version, just like you saw, directly to your kids. The second way is to tell the Bible story yourself. And here's the best part. If you want to tell the story yourself, we provide you all the animations and music so you can tell the Bible story just like you saw in the video. Let me show you how this works. All animations on the DVD are in chapter format. So, as you tell the story, you simply advance to the next chapter on the DVD as you go. Each animation freezes at the end of the chapter, allowing you to tell the story at your own pace. All you have to do is watch the person telling the Bible story on the DVD to see how it's done. Then, learn the included script and get ready to wow your kids each week. All right, let's keep going. After the Bible story, the teacher and co-teacher go into more detail about how the main point was illustrated in the Bible story. You know, I was watching that and thinking, it must have been amazing to see that tabernacle. Oh. I mean, just think about it. All those people giving their time and their talents and their treasures to build this place that God would live. I mean, it must have been remarkable. Oh, yeah. I mean, the Israelites gave their best. They didn't just give, like, you know, stuff they didn't want. They gave the best things that they have, the best of their things, the best of their money, the best of their effort. And that's the way that we can worship God, too. And we can worship Him by coming to church. And when we do that, we need to give our best when we're here. We need to sing our loudest, we need to dance our hardest, and shout our loudest, and worship Him the best that we can. And then we also can sing and worship at home. We can give our offerings and bring the best that we have to God in that way as well. That's true, and we can pray and read our Bibles. Yes, that's right. Once this is done, it's time to look at our memory and Bible verse for the lesson. In each lesson, the Bible verse is chosen to help the kids understand the main point better and is one that the kids can memorize during the upcoming week. Here is the presentation of the Bible verse for this lesson. Three, two, one, go! All right, so everyone stand up and let's read this Bible verse together. Everyone on your feet. You can follow along in your Bible or you can look up on the screen right here. You are worthy, O Lord our God. You are worthy, O Lord our God. That's better. To receive glory and honor and power. To receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things. For you created all things. They exist because they exist because you created what you pleased. You created what you pleased. Revelation 4. Revelation 4. 11. 11. NLT. NLT. Good job. Good job, you guys. You guys did a good job. You can have that a That was a great job. C. So, you know, this verse tells us that God is worthy of our worship because he created everything. I mean, if you think about it, you know, we've studied that before when, in, in, uh, when God created the world, He just spoke and things came into being. So He created everything. That's just one more reason why we should worship Him. It's pretty amazing that God would love us imperfect people and He's perfect, right? It definitely is. You know, I mean, just think about it. God's perfect and holy and awesome and we're not, but He still loves us. And again, that's another reason for us to worship That's God. really cool. And when you think about it, it's so great that we have places like church and camp to come and worship God. Once they have done the Bible verse, it's now time for the skit. The skit is a humorous story that helps teach the main point from the Bible story in a fun way. In the series, Alasso Ranch, which is all about getting to know God better, we find Fisher and Perry as they get camp ready for all the kids who will be coming in the next week. And along the way, they learn a few things, the most important being the main point for the day. God is awesome, so I will worship Him. Here's the skit that helps teach that main point.
Fisher. Oh, I'm so sorry, I'm late. My alarm didn't go off this morning. I overslept. But I ran all the way here. I'm so sorry, I'm late. It, it's okay, you, you're not late. What? You're not late, you're actually over an hour early. Early? What? I, I, I don't get it, I, I don't understand. Don't worry about it. Since you're here, you can go ahead and help me get the worship center stage set up for the camp at night service. Okay, that sounds good. Uh, what's a camp at night service? It's one of the last things the campers do each day at camp. Everybody gathers in the worship center. There's music and games and, and, and a speaker who teaches every night. There's okay. skits and cheering and, and points and competitions. It's, it's a ton of fun, but it takes a lot of work to get it ready. So here, why don't you take this list and head on over to the worship center. Everything you need should already be over there, but, but again, it, there's a lot to do, so stick to the list. Oh, okay. Whoa, you weren't kidding, there is a lot here. Set up supplies for all games, including individual, group, and team games. Uh, check microphones and sound system. Run through the service cues on the computer. Gather props for the message and drama presentation. Uh, place point buckets on the stage and test out the house and stage lights and lighting cues. Right, yeah. again, I know it sounds like a lot, but everything you need is already over there and I'll be here if you need anything. Okay, great, I'm on it, Fisher. Okay, let's the game sheet. Oh, that'll leave a mark. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Well, that works. All right. Wow. Whew, Fisher sure put a lot of thought into this list. And a lot of work into the camp and night service. Oh. I sure hope the kids appreciate all the hard work he's gone to for this. Oh. Wait a minute. That's it. You know, the kids really should be showing appreciation to Fisher and, and all the hard work he's put into all of camp. That's it. Well, we won't have a camp at night worship service. We'll have a camp at night surprise appreciation for Fisher's greatness party extravaganza thing. Brought to you by Perry. Yeah, yeah, this is going to be awesome. Really awesome. Uh, uh, wait a minute. This list is old news. I don't need that anymore. I need a brand new list. <laughs> Wait a minute. I do not need this stuff anymore. Hey, Fisher. Hey, what? Oh, nothing, nothing at all. Hey, just wondering. Um, did you uh, have a um, uh, favorite flavor of uh, ice cream? Uh, Rocky Road, I guess. Oh, okay. Yeah, good. Good to know. And um, uh, is there any kind of music you like? Uh, maybe techno. I, I, anything up? Well, why do you ask? Oh no, I, I wasn't asking anything. No, nothing, nothing. No reason. No one got. Okay, well, how's setup going for the Bye. camp at night worship service? Hey again, Fisher. Hey again, Perry. How's setup coming? Setup? Wait, wait, what's no, 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 you weren't supposed to know about it. It was supposed to be a surprise. Oh, and now it's ruined. It's ruined. What? Oh, <laughs> you, you were talking about something else. Oh. <laughs> oh! Yeah, I was oh. talking about the setup for the camp at night worship yeah. service. What are yeah. you talking about? Oh, what? Me? No, nothing! 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 And speaking of nothing, um, do you have a preference uh, to balloons or streamers at surprise parties? I, I like them both, but balloons and streamers are on the list for you for the setup for the <laughs> camp but at night worship service. What is he doing? Hey, 
Hey, Fisher, my friend. Hey, Perry, my friend. Yeah, quick question for you. Um, okay, imagine for a second that you're going into a room that you think is empty, but then all of a sudden, a bunch of people jump out and yell, surprise. Would you be happy and excited, or would you be scared? Hmm? Uh, I, um, I, I, you know what? I, I, weird question. Just, just forget I asked. Forget, forget I was here. For, just, just forget everything. Bye, Fisher. Bye. Harry, so weird. No, this can't be good. Fisher, what are you doing in here? You're not supposed to be in here. Uh, we, uh, um, I mean, uh, surprise! Yeah, Woo Oh, wow. Okay, now be honest. Were you surprised? I shouldn't be, but I am. Yes! What is all this? It's a thank you party for you, Fisher. You've been working really hard to make sure this camp's awesome. So I've come up with a brand new way for the kids to spend their evenings at camp. Now, the entire Camp at Night service is all a celebration in honor of you, Fisher, and the hard work you've been doing to make sure this camp's gonna be awesome. Thank you, Fisher, and you're welcome. Harry, I, I appreciate all the thought and the mm -hmm. effort that you've put into setting all this up, but yep. we can't make the Camp at Night service about me. Wait, what? But, but why not? Because it's not about me. It's about God. Everything that we do here at camp, from the activities to the lessons, it's. It's all about God because he's the only one who's worthy of our worship. So when the kids come to the camp at night worship service, I, I want them to be able to totally focus on God, singing to him, praising him, thanking him for who he is and what he's done. But, but I worked really, really hard on all this. And, and I'm glad that you worked hard on this, but, but I need you to work even harder to make sure that the kids' worship experience is awesome because God deserves our absolute best. Wow. Sorry, Fisher. I guess I just got really caught up in the idea of having a big party. And, and you know, that's okay. If, if we plan our service right, it'll be better than any party that's out there. Hmm. I tell you what, why don't I stick around and show you what I'm talking about? Oh, that'd be great. Thanks a lot, Fisher. Oh, wait, wait a second. What's that over there? What? what where? <laughs> yeah, man. Okay, time to stop again. Guess what? If you want to, you can perform the skit live as well. Just like the Bible story, we provide all of the scripts, music, and animations that you need to pull it off. All you have to do is have your actors watch the video you just saw so they can see how to do it. Learn their scripts, and with a couple of artistic adjustments to the stage set, they'll be ready to go. We've found that most churches like ours show the skit off the video, but we do have some churches using Elevate Kids that love performing the skits live. The beautiful thing is that decision is completely up to you. After the skit, the teacher and co-teacher spend another few minutes reviewing what just happened in the skit and make sure the kids understand how the characters in the skit learn the main point. I what? actually, I have to admit, I felt a little bad for Perry. I mean, for Perry? I, well, I feel like he was just trying to honor Fisher for working so hard to make the camp great. Is that really so bad? Well, you know, it's very easy for us to get caught up in honoring another person instead of God. I mean, showing our appreciation to other people is great, but if we ever start to focus more on a person or even a group of people, uh, like a band or somebody that we like, instead of focusing on God, we're focusing on them more than God, it's always bad. We're putting them in God's place. Okay, that makes sense. And you said band. That reminds me of a good example okay. that maybe you guys can relate to. I know I can. Let's say you have uh, posters all over your room of your favorite okay. band or singer, and you know every single word to every single song, and you go to all okay. the concerts, 
and maybe you even look up information about them on the internet that you can know all there is to know. Well, it would seem like if you did that, you're putting more of an effort into honoring maybe that band or that singer than you are God. It's kind of like you're saying God isn't as important. Is that true? Well, it sounds like to me in that case, yeah. yes. Because definitely if, if you're more excited about going to their concerts yeah. than you are about coming to church, if you're more excited about reading their song lyrics than you are about reading the Bible, mm. and you spend more time doing that and then worshiping God, eh, I'd say you're stepping in dangerous territory. You need to make God the only focus of our worship. Uh, so that's why it's so important to have a daily time of worship with God. Because if you sure. put him first, get into that habit of putting him first every single day, well, then it seems like there's less room for anything else to come in and steal the focus. Exactly. You know, we shouldn't be worshiping God just when you're here at church with us. I mean, this is great, but that's not your only time of worship. It, just like Pastor Mike said in the video, we should be worshiping God every single day. Once all of these elements are completed, we're just about ready to break up into small groups. But before we do, we always stop and take time to worship God by bringing our offering. This is a special time where kids can show their love for God by bringing back to Him a small part of what He has blessed them with. All right, now it's time to go to the small group teaching time. This is a time where kids get with their small group leaders in groups of 10 and do several hands-on learning activities. This is one of the more critical times in the hour. Yes, because it's here that relationships between the children and their leader are strengthened. And it's where the children learn more about applying the main point to their everyday lives. Now here's just a note. If you're using Elevate Kids in a classroom with just one teacher, these activities would be led by that teacher in the class. Now here is something that really sets Elevate Kids apart. All of the small group activities you just talked about, including the opening activities, are filmed by us in studio. That means that rather than your teachers having to learn each activity by studying a typical leader's guide, they will instead see someone on video teaching the very activities that they will soon be teaching themselves. And that's huge. As the children's pastor of Fellowship Church for over the last 18 years, I've found that the best form of training is not to tell someone what to do, not to have someone read what to do, but to instead show them what to do, which is exactly what the video training does. Let us show you an activity so you can see an example of how this training works. In this application activity called What Makes God Awesome, the children will learn that the awesome things that God has made and has given us should remind us to worship Him. Lead the activity like this. Okay guys, our main point is God is awesome, so I will worship Him. Let's say that all together. God is awesome, so I will worship Him. him. Great. Now, uh, today we're going to look at some of the reasons uh, why God is awesome. There are too many to put on one list, but we got a few of them. And uh, we are going to learn how we can worship Him for them. So this is how it's going to work. All right. Uh, up here you'll see on this side are ways that we worship God, okay? Uh, we give an offering, we uh, do what the Bible says, uh, we pray, we read our Bible, we sing worship songs, and we come to church regularly. Now, there's more ways to worship God than that, but again, it's just ones that we have on this list. And then on this side are things that either God has made, like creation, uh, or things that God has given us, like a voice to sing, or eyes to read, or even shoes, clothes, money, house, things like that. All right, so uh, this is what I want us to do. We're gonna start with one of the reasons that God is awesome or things that awesome things that God has made, like creation. And then I want you to think of ways that we could worship God in response to what He has made or what He has given us, okay? And uh, when you have one, you'll come up here, you'll use one of these pieces of tape, and you'll tape a piece of yarn to creation, because that's the first one we're talking about. And then you can tape the other end of the yarn to uh, whatever one you pick. And then we'll cut off we'll cut off the extra. I've got the scissors here. All right. So uh, Amanda, uh, what about creation? What do you think? What's a way that we can respond in worship uh, to the awesome creation that God has made? Singing worship songs. Singing worship songs. OK, come up here and I get a piece of tape and tape that into creation. There you go. And then uh, I'll help you connect that across. Wow, you cut that the exact right length. 
Good job. Okay, great. All right, who wants to go next? Something else that we can do in response to uh, God's awesome creation that he's made. Pray. Pray. That's right. We can pray and thank God for what he's made. So come on up and uh, let's see. Hold that on creation. There we go. And then you can cut that off. Good job. And then take that in down. Oh, we had a little slack there. That's okay. All right, guys. Well, look at this poster board and all of the ways that uh, ways that the awesome things that God has made and awesome things that He's given us are connected to the ways that we can worship Him. You know, there's just so many ways that God is awesome. Not even all the ones we could put on the board here. But remember this week, as you go through your week, everything you see should remind you of the awesome things that God has made and that God is awesome. And you can worship Him, and you can worship Him in many of these ways. In addition to the video training, Elevate Kids also provides a help sheet that each small group leader can use to remind them of what to say as they lead the activity. You know, since we began using this type of training for our small group leaders, their teaching ability has increased significantly. And our retention of those teachers has increased because we've set them up to succeed as a small group leader. Now, our leaders look forward to coming and teaching because they know exactly what to do and how to do it. So if you are having trouble getting your teachers to come to training, or if you have a hard time getting your teachers to understand how to lead the activities, then this is a great solution designed specifically for you. After the small group teaching time is over, it's time to begin wrapping up. To do this, the kids all come back to the worship area where the whole hour is summed up by the teacher and the co-teacher. And the kids play a review game where they'll get a chance to answer questions from what they learned that day. All right, here's our next question. How do we worship God? Do we worship God by singing praise songs to Him? Do we worship God by spending time with Him reading our Bibles and praying? Do we worship God by bringing our tithes and offerings? Or do we worship Him by doing all of those things? Do you think you know the answer? Do you think you know the answer? Okay. Are you ready for our secret word? Our secret word, which is chowabunga. Chow down. Chili. <laughs> which one was first? I was very close. <laughs> this one, it was so close. Oh my goodness. All right, so which, which one is A, B, C, or D? D. D, all of the above, that is correct. <laughs> After this, it's time for the parents to pick up their kids who are excitedly awaiting to share with their parents what they learned that day. That pretty well sums up the teaching time. And now, let us sum up all the different elements that you get when you buy an Elevate Base Pack. But before we do that, there's one element that we deliberately waited to share, and that is Elevate Music. With Elevate Kids, each new series comes with two original songs that relate to the series and can be used during your teaching time. Here's a brief segment showcasing some of those songs. These are the things that we do at the Roundup. take a few minutes to look at the basic elements that make Elevate Kids go. Each Elevate Kids series is designed to last eight weeks, and each series is theme-based. To show you what we mean, let's take a look at a couple of our theme maps that showcase the different series Elevate Kids offers. In our series on the trail, 
We use a Western theme to teach eight weeks on the exodus of the Israelites from Egypt. In Shipwrecked, we use a beach theme to study the life of Paul. In our series, To the Depths, we use an ocean theme to teach eight weeks on the book of James. In Super Sports, we use a sports theme to learn about the greatest team ever assembled, the Disciples. In our series Center Stage, we use a concert theme to teach eight weeks on worship. In Entourage, we use a movie theme to teach about friendship. And in our series Professor Playtime's Christmas Shop of Wonders, we use a Christmas themed toy shop to teach eight weeks on the real meaning of Christmas. Now, you may be asking, what's up with the maps? Well, let me tell you. From the very beginning, we wanted to find a fun way to showcase each individual series to our kids so that they could see where we've been and where we're going in the future. The maps are what we came up with to accomplish that. And we would recommend that you download all four of the maps and put them where the kids can see them. Then, let them guess where you might be taking them next. It's like a map to one of the coolest theme parks in the world. All right, let's talk about the base pack. When you order Elevate Kids, you will receive in the mail an Elevate Kids base pack that will look like this. In the base pack, you will find one lesson material CD-ROM that contains everything that is printable for each lesson, including children's activity sheets, small group leader help sheets, take-home activities, scripts for each lesson, and more. Let's stop for a minute and talk about one of the most important things on the CD-ROM, the script. Each week, you will print off for your teacher or teachers a script that will look something like this. The scripts are easy to follow and give specific details about when to advance to the next chapter according to where you are in the script. All the person running the DVD has to do is follow along on the script and press play at the appropriate time. Now, you'll find that there are three different scripts to choose from for each lesson. Each script allows you to present the material in a different way. You just choose the script that's right for you in your environment and forget about the other two. Next in the base pack, you will find the Watch It Train DVD. When you want to teach the lesson like you saw earlier in the video, this is the DVD you will use to accomplish that. First, print off the script from your CD-ROM that's designed to be used with the Watch It Train DVD. Then, insert your Watch It Train DVD into your DVD player and you will see this screen. Once there, choose the lesson you'll be teaching and the DVD will go to the first chapter of that lesson. Your script will then walk you through the whole lesson telling you each step of the way when to advance to the next chapter on the DVD. It does this in a simple manner. Along the side of the script, there are chapter numbers and pictures. As you teach through the script, you will come upon each of those numbers. When you do, the person running your DVD will know it's time to advance to the next chapter. Now, also in your base pack, you'll find a DVD entitled Perform It Live. If, when you're teaching the lesson, you decide to perform the skit and Bible story live in front of the kids, instead of showing them to your kids off the DVD, this is the disc you will use. First, print off the script that is designed to be used with the Perform It Live DVD. You will notice that this script behaves exactly the same as the script for the Watch It Train. Like the Watch It Train script, as you teach through the Perform It Live script, the chapter numbers will come up. When they do, the person running your DVD will know it's time to advance to the next chapter. All right, let me give you a quick suggestion. If you want your teachers to perform the skit or Bible story live in front of the kids, be sure to give each one of them a Watch a Train DVD from your base pack. Then, from that DVD, they will be able to watch our actors perform the skit or see our person teaching the Bible story. When your teachers watch this, they will see exactly how to do it. It's like having a rehearsal without having to rehearse. Next comes the small group DVDs. These are the DVDs that you will give out to your small group leaders at the beginning of each series. When your small group leaders put the DVD into their player, a screen will come up that will look something like this. Your small group leaders will then choose the appropriate lesson and watch each of the small group activities being taught by one of our teachers. In addition to watching the DVD, you will also give your small group leaders a help sheet for every lesson, which looks like this. This help sheet, which can be printed from your CD-ROM, will help your leaders remember what they're supposed to do, as well as remember what to say before, during, and after the activity. 
Each base pack contains two small group DVDs with more available for purchase. Last, but not least, is your soundtrack CD. On this valuable disc, you will find all the background music that you will need to totally immerse your children's environment in the sounds and feel of the theme. Also on this disc is a soundtrack that you will play if you tell the Bible story live. Now, you can truly tell the story exactly as the teacher did on the DVD. Okay, we're almost done. But before we go, let us show you what Elevate Kids looks like when you use one person as the teacher in a classroom setting. To begin, you'll print off the single teacher script from your CD-ROM. This is one of the three scripts I talked about earlier. Then, insert your Watch a Train DVD into your DVD player and go to the appropriate lesson. Then, just like before, follow the script and advance the DVD to each chapter when the script calls for it. All of the elements are exactly like we showed earlier. The only difference is that instead of having two teachers, you only have one. And instead of having separate small group leaders, the teacher leads the small group activities. Well, that about wraps it up. But before we go, if you would like to find out about Elevate Junior, which is our curriculum for preschoolers age three to kindergarten, be sure to check out the video, What is Elevate Junior? And to see how both Elevate Kids and Elevate Junior can be brought into every child's home during the week, be sure to check out the video, What is Elevate at Home? Well, I hope you have a better understanding of what Elevate Kids has to offer your elementary department. It's been great sharing this with you, and I hope you'll give Elevate Kids a try. Me too. I think you'll be glad you did.